host, Dan Rojas. In a previous post, I showed you this frame, which I'm standing in, with a large Fresnel lens in it. Unfortunately, we had a freak storm come out of nowhere and we got like 60 mile an hour winds. And even though this was anchored down, it just blew it over like nothing. So I'm gonna learn from that mistake. That lens is gonna be used for another project, maybe how to put 20 pieces together, I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, what I'm doing is deciding which lens to use. My choice is between this lens, which is very clear, and you can see that in this portion out here, my hand, you can see that there's, it's relatively fo uh, focused, it's not distorted in any way. Um, the other lens is actually, has more clarity, but we're gonna see, check that one and compare. You can tell we still live in the same place. Um, nothing's changed and that's a good thing. But if you notice in the distance, right? I'm gonna put this one over. Kind of notice how everything gets distorted the further away you go, okay? That's important because that affects the focal point and scattering. Obviously close up, this would be a lens you'd be like, yeah, and it actually is a good lens. You can see that, but as I go back, like watch my hand go back, see how it starts to disappear? That has to do with the fact that this lens was made with a more of a flat process, almost a molded process. And what this does is it takes about 20% of the power and scatters it over the whole area. It's got to do with how optics are. If um, you remember back in the day with 35 millimeter cameras, with the film cameras and the lenses that would attach, they, even a lens that attaches now, the opposite is true. There's lenses that don't pin cushion around the edge. So this is kind of like that process in reverse. So if you get a lens, I mean, this will work good. This does a really good job, but they're the same size. This one's gonna have about 20% more power, even though this one's a little clearer. If you look at it, you'd be like, wow. So if you look here, when I back my hand, it disappears. We're gonna test the other one. Woo, is it hot out? Ugh. So we're gonna go ahead and test this one. And as I move my hand back, you can see that like, it's there almost the whole way. It doesn't disappear. So that means that this was made with a round cylinder the way that it was imprinted. And it's very complicated process the way some of these were made. You can mold a lens if you focus just on a smaller part, but as you get bigger, the pin cushioning, reverse pin cushioning as the case may be, becomes even worse with these work. So I'm gonna put this in, see if it fits. It should be, because they're all pretty much the same size. And that fits in there. All right, so really we got some sunlight. There would be no point in doing this video. Got lightheaded, I gotta get some something to drink. There'd be no point in doing this video without seeing this do something. So the sun's over there. There's clouds on the way. Let's do this fast. Obviously you don't wanna be on that side. One thing you wanna do is have the Fresnel side facing the sun. So those are the clouds that are moving in. This is the lens. I don't, I've got goggles on, so we are here with the focal point. There it is right there. And it's not gonna hit the stand. I, I use wood because, like for the frame, because if something happens, it will just burn this or scorch the edges. If it's steel, it's not gonna, it might not do it. It might just heat it up really bad. And I've had that happen the very first frame that I, uh, some, someone made for me out of steel and the number of times that I grabbed it when it was hot was ridiculous. Fortunately, it wasn't super hot, but you can see that this will do stuff. So tomorrow or the next day, hopefully, yes, maybe. You guys, if you could post in the comments something that you would like to see me do with this. I'm your host, Dan Rojas. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sticking around and enjoy our videos.